Hi, I'm Janet with um, ERLC, and I am interested in the way computing science is threaded through the new science curriculum, and in fact, the curriculum in general. Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes just giving a little bit more context to some of the ideas that we talked about last time. So um, last time we looked at um, the idea of what is computer science, what is computational thinking and design thinking, this is like that was then. And then um, we looked at what this looks like a little bit in the new curriculum and wanting to give you some assurance that a lot of what computational thinking is, is really basic problem solving. And, and if you work with students to, um, to identify, you know, problems and to break the pieces apart and, and um, analyze them and abstract from them and come up with, with directions for how you're going to solve problems, you're already doing computational thinking. And to take it to the next level, I introduce some of the language of computational thinking that um, can help people start to be more mindful about when they are using those steps. Language such as pattern recognition, creating algorithms, things like that. Anyway, um, at the end of the session, I hoped people could leave thinking, how am I teaching computational thinking to some extent already and not getting into anything to do with computers at all? Well, today we're going to look at it in two other ways. We're going to take that idea of computational thinking and review it and then um, expand upon it. So I'd like to share with you some resources that I found helpful myself when wrapping my head around what computational thinking is all about. And so I'll share those resources with you so you can, you can explore them at your own leisure. And then we'll look at the curriculum itself and think what does, what concepts do I need to know from a curriculum perspective at each grade level? And today we're going to focus on K to three. And then consider about where might our students of the computer science concepts, where might they actually be augmented through the use of little robots and why might I care about that? And then last of all, the thought to leave with is how might our students demonstrate their understanding of computer science concepts, not only in science, but in other subjects. So what is computational thinking? These are the applications of computational thinking across the curriculum that we talked about last time. This comes from um, School District 61, I believe, in British Columbia. So decomposition, which is breaking something down into its smaller parts. Pattern recognition, looking for similarities or trends. Abstraction, focusing on what's important, ignoring what is unnecessary. And then algorithmic design, which is creating the step-by-step -step instructions. Those are the steps within computational thinking. Um, but there's more, of course, than computational thinking, which you see here, when we think of computing science as a whole, when we think of programming or coding, or when we think of computing as a whole. So the first thing we're doing today is kind of wrapping our heads around these different things so we can define them a little bit better. This image I've taken from a website called Digital Promise. And in Digital Promise, they um, talk at length about what is computational thinking and these other concepts. So it looks at the relationship between computer science, computational thinking, programming, and computing, and it talks about them. Now, these four videos have, for me, provided me with a wealth of information about computational thinking, and I very much would like to share them with you. I'll just show a few seconds of each because that will give you a little bit of a sense of the spirit of it, but you'll see on your presentation here that I've included QR codes, which will link you to each of those videos in turn. So if you just pause this video and hover your phone over the QR code, that can take you to the link of these actual videos themselves. So the first one I'd like to show you is just a short little, I think it's about four minutes long, if that, video about computational thinking. It's taken um, from a company that puts together resources for students on computational thinking and other like concepts. Computational thinking. What is it and why is it so important? Let's start by looking at the what. You may think that computational thinking is about thinking like a robot or programming like an expert, but it's not. Rather, it is a very versatile skill, a skill that focuses on critical and logical thinking. To put it simply, computational thinking is a problem-solving skill. 
let's dive a little deeper. Computational thinking is about looking at a problem and solving it systematically, and therefore arriving at a solution that both humans and computers can understand. Essentially, it is considered the highest order of problem solving. Computational thinking is made up of four elements. Decomposition, pattern recognition. A little bit of an idea of the flavor of the video and I highly recommend it. it. Gives you an overview of computational thinking and it also is one that you can use with students. The next one I'd like to show you is very much for adults. It is an excerpt from a lecture by Jeanette Wing of Microsoft on computational thinking. In this lecture, she wonders about how computational thinking could be better taught in schools. And that's where last time when I talked about knowing that vocabulary of decomposition, pattern recognition, and so forth, that's where I got that idea was from this video. In K through 12 or school, educa school level education. Um, and the, the research question is, what is an effective way of learning computational thinking um, by K through 12 students? And I'd like to break this down into two parts. One is, what concepts can students best learn when? And my analogy is to mathematics. When you're, by the time you're five years old and you enter kindergarten, you have a sense of number. So I'm going to leave it there. And so you can see that the way her mind is wondering is she's looking at how can we leverage what students are already doing in school in order to create a scope and sequence for them to be engaging in computational thinking. So you'll find if, if you have that kind of academic interest in things that it, it's, it's a fascinating video to listen to. This one, very different flavor. All big problems are tiny problems stuck together. So today we're going to get started with something called computational thinking. When we say computer science is more about ideas than technology, what we actually talk about is human thinking skills. The practices, perspectives and concepts we humans use to structure problems in a way that a computer can solve them. This is what computational thinking is all about. Computational thinking is something that people do, and it includes the ability to think logically, algorithmically, break problems apart and spot patterns. When you are playing music, solving an equation or making crafts, you are using your computational thinking skills. Computational thinking doesn't have an exact definition. Sometimes the list includes things like automation, data, analysis, parallelization and simulation. In this episode, we're not looking for a perfect definition, but rather trying to help you see how to connect computer science to the things in the real world, as well as enrich your computer science teaching and learning. So again, a very different flavor to the video. You might have noticed that she had a quote defining computational thinking early on that was from um, Jeanette Wing who is, of course, the person who gave the lecture in this video. So we have lots of overlap, similarity and thoughts in these. You might also have noticed in this third video that in her comments, she also refers to making a peanut butter sandwich, which you might have seen this video before, which is exactly looking at instructions on how Sorry. to make I had to, I had to make it extremely specific. Oh, get a butter knife and stick it inside of the peanut butter jar. With the knife, scoop a bit of peanut butter out of A bit, of the, that means like a lot. A bit means a lot? I hope you found these videos as interesting as I did in terms of wrapping your head around the notion of computational thinking a little bit more. There are also some resources on the Edutopia site that I have found really good in terms of expanding my, my concept of what computational thinking actually is. So I just took you to um, the edutopia.org website and searched the word computational. And you'll see there are 72 resources that have come up here. And um, the, you can see right from the beginning, we have screen-free computational thinking, take students through an unplugged way to, um, to learn about computational thinking through physical movement talks about books and literature, screen-free robots, and um, other ways that we can start to engage students in computational thinking with or without little robots. 
computational thinking using stories, computational thinking as critical thinking, it's flexibility, kindergartners across the curriculum, simple ways in enrichment classes, math, lots and lots of ways to um, explore computational thinking with your students. So don't miss the blog postings in the Edutopia website. And then before we get into the curriculum piece, I do want to talk about little robots a little bit. If you're the kind of teacher who enjoys using these robots with your classes, this isn't the time to stop using it at all. You'll find that you can cover up so many of the computational thinking um, and computer science outcomes with these devices. Uh, but if you're not a teacher who's who wants to use them, there's nothing in the curriculum that specifies that you do have to use them. Um, but I am going to talk a little bit about coding. So in this image from Digital Pro Promise, it talks about how within the general concept of computing, we have computer science, the discipline, computational, the thinking, which can be within computer science, but also in all these other subject areas, as we've just shared. And then this programming or coding, which is firmly situated within computer science and, of course, in computational thinking as well. And so just to wrap your head around when is computational thinking computer science, when is it coding, and when is it just itself. CS First is a website and program put together by Google for Education that lets teachers challenge students with various challenges to learn computer science. And so there are different sorts of projects that students can engage in and they can save their work if they sign in using their Google accounts. So highly recommended. There's scratch, um, scratch challenges in there and everything is saved within their, um, their school Google account. And code.org and um, another website, Kids Code Juness, um, here in Canada are both sites that can help support students learn how to code. And so you may have heard of Hour of Code takes place in December, but you can hold your Hour of Code anytime you decide. And um, within Hour of Code, there are students are given various challenges again that they can engage in to show that they are coding for an hour. And so we have like dance party and a T-Rex game and all kinds of all kinds of activities that students can engage in to create these um, these games and other animations. So Hour of Code is something not to be missed. Both of these websites I strongly recommend peeking around in. And now this image, we'll, we're going to come back to again in a little bit. It is a little bit different from the other models because although it uses language like algorithms, patterns, decomposition, and abstraction, it also uses a, talks about approaches such as tinkering, creating, debugging, persevering, and collaborating. And these, these more high-level competencies are, are more associated, I think, with the makerspace movement and like making things and, and design thinking um, often than with the logical, practical, computer science, computational thinking. But what's interesting is when you put this all together, this creativity piece, this is when our computational thinkers turn into innovators. And what I see in the language in the curriculum is that, that we are looking at combining all of these ideas to create students who are prepared to be innovators in their future years. We're going to move into the curriculum in a minute, but I first of all would like to just talk about the computing science piece itself. And so if you click on that image, it'll take you into the computing science um, extracted from the entire science curriculum. So this, this is seven pages, two for K1 and two, two for three and four, and two for grades five and six. So it's just the computing science piece. If you'd like to print that up or save that for your own files. And just a note that the goal of this organizing idea is problem solving and scientific inquiry are developed through the knowledgeable application of creativity, design, and computational thinking. And so we're using these concepts to, we're applying them in a knowledgeable way 
to solve problems and engage in scientific inquiry. And so um, this here image shows that these um, quest, the guiding questions as we go through here are very much recursive. So we'll do a step forward from one grade to the next, and but we're always looking back and kind of reviewing what we did before. So whichever grade you're teaching, if you're a grade six teacher, good idea to go back and look through the other grades as well so you can go back with your students and kind of review those other concepts along the line. So as we get into the curriculum itself, you'll see the language coming out in there, such as the ones that you see here. And let's go take a look. In kindergarten, our guiding question is, how can instructions be used? And so there are basically two main points. One is the give and take of instructions. So we can receive instructions these ways and we can provide instructions, give them in these ways. So that's the first main point within the kindergarten curriculum. And then the next part is, is that instructions may have one step, but they may also have more than one step. So what is your purpose? What do you have to do to get there? And um, how many steps will it be? And if it's more than one steps, then the sequence um, can affect the outcomes. And so if you have to go forward and sideways to get to the coat rack versus sideways and forward, um, because the coat rack is in the way, if you go sideways and forward, that's going to affect the outcome. So grade one, we move it forward a little bit and we say, how can the instructions affect the outcomes? And so now again, we look at giving instructions in these different forms and receiving um, instructions in, um, that are given in a specific order, directions, recipes, computer programs, and safety protocols. And so the bold around these boxes is the understandings. So the form the instructions are given may not affect the outcome, but they may. And that's where that sequence comes in. So lots of similarity between what's coming out here in kindergarten and here in grade one. Once we get to grade two, we have two pages for grades two and grade three. And so in grades two, we start to distinguish between creativity, design, and collaboration. And we're moving towards the concept, the understanding that instructions are designed using creativity and problem solving, they're designed using creativity and problem solving, and that can be enhanced through collaboration. So it talks about creativity um, and examples of ways that we can generate original things. It could be ideas, technology, tools, products. We talk about design, that creativity can be used to design instructions and again, examples. And once we pull in that collaborative piece, it can improve ideas, it can enhance creativity, and it can enhance problem solving. And in fact, by the time we get to grade three, we get more specific about people working together to um, create multiple paths to solutions and also to debug or, you know, problem, um, troubleshoot things. So here we go, sorry, grade two. So this is where we have our instructions and our outcome, how can creativity support design? Our understanding is instructions can be created to be precise, reliable, and efficient to achieve the desired outcome. And um, so we have precise, reliable, and efficient with descriptions of that. And we have the idea of the people creating instructions and how we can show them in various ways. So you can see how these ideas here are the same as the ideas that we've talked about before. It's very recursive. And now that creativity and collaboration can be used to improve ideas and to debug those ideas as we reach the outcome. In grade three, we start to use the language of computational thinking a little bit. The word computational thinking is used and the definition given in the curriculum is very similar to what we've talked about in these videos. And so the question in grade three asks, how does creativity contribute to computational thinking, which is a problem solving process that uses creativity. And so um, it talks about what it is, 
talks about how it is used. And then we get into that piece I referred to before where you might have more than one way that to reach your outcome. It can be achieved in different ways. And being creative and by using divergent thinking, you can come up with those various sets of instructions. It talks about the value of creativity as being an important part of computer science and examples of how in Canada we've contributed to that. Our main ideas, our computational thinking is a problem solving process using creativity and it involves divergent thinking, can help develop different ways to achieve the same outcome and it involves imagination, observation, and making connections. So when you think about all of these pieces that we've talked about in this video, you can see that the questions from kindergarten to grade three are all ones that we can look at and contemplate and address through various kinds of activities really across the curriculum in general. And um, before we go any further about curriculum connections, I do want to just do a little zoom in particular um, about robots. There is nothing in the curriculum that says you have to use little robots. Um, however, I know some people love to use these little robots with their students because when they're using, when students are using those robots and engaging in coding activities in order to activate the robots, they're covering off all of these skills that you can see in this infographic in front of us. It really is a kind of a literacy that we develop through coding um, that engages students in all these 21st century skills and cross is works in a very cross curricular kind of a way. And so um, coding, of course, is only a small programming here is a small segment of computer science. It's not the whole thing. And computational thinking itself is much bigger than coding. But it is interesting how people who engage their students in coding tend to get excited about it. And the reason why is because they see that excitement within their students. And you can see in these pictures that their eyes, their hands, their faces, their feet, like their whole bodies, their fingers are, are connected in creatively and collaboratively designing instructions to meet defined outcomes. And so coding is exciting and coding is fun and it covers off a whole lot of outcomes. You don't have to do coding with your students until you get to grade five or grade six and it doesn't have to be with little robots. It can be using block programming, which is actually referred to down the road. Um, each of these images here takes you to research that supports the value of coding for presenting, uh, particularly if their students are engaged in co-creative project-oriented robotic challenges, which is like the top of this, this little staircase here, um, for teaching all of those 21st century skills. And so this is proven through the research. It's exciting. I would love to speak to you much longer on it, but we have only so much time. Um, I decided to ask ChatGPT for to give me some examples of computational thinking integration that is beyond um, coding. And so you can see here that this was an, uh, this kind of a meta level to what I'm showing you here, that I was able to ask this question to an artificial intelligence bot and it's given me some really good examples where it's broken down here the different segments of computational thinking and it's giving us general ideas of how students can use those um, concepts by not doing any coding. But it also went further and gave me a whole lot of very specific things that students can be doing and it shows how they are developing computational thinking through engaging in that activity. I have a couple more pages of these. It goes on and on and makes me wonder how students can be engaged in anything at school and not be using computational thinking because there are so many examples of this. And so think about that as, as you're working in various subject areas and various grade levels. How can we make computational thinking just something that we naturally do because it probably already is. And the only difference, as mentioned in our last video, is maybe we need to start using that language a little bit more so that they can see 
that when they're breaking something down into smaller parts in a stop motion animation, that is the same as breaking it down into smaller parts when working on a coding program in Scratch or in a community service project where they're trying to break down aspects of what they need to address in order to solve a problem. So last but not least, I want to just take a look at the competencies. And if I click into the competency progressions here, think about the kinds of ideas we've looked at today, critical thinking, problem solving, researching and managing information, creativity and innovation, communication, collaboration, citizenship, and personal growth and well-being. Um, how many of these do you see as being able to be checked off through the use of um, computational thinking and design thinking and of course creativity and and of course most of them if not all of them would be checked off and we haven't even clicked into the literacy progressions or the numeracy progressions so um, you'll see it's it's really a huge piece um, within the curriculum that we can really encourage so that our students can um, can get a good grasp and um, move forward in those areas. So what are your next steps integrating elements of the computing science curriculum into your classroom, school, or district? That's your call to action for today. What are you doing? And just to leave you with a final thought, I believe collaborative cross-curricular projects and student agency not only can make learning visible, but it can bring learning to life. And so if you think of those pictures of those students with those little robots, um, they could have been using robots, they could have been putting together um, a graph of um, that's, that's tracing items being collected for the food bank and comparing it to the graph of a neighborhood school engaged in the same challenge. I mean, there are so many ways students can be involved in working with data in, in a way that empowers them as learners to solve a bigger problem. Um, but all of these things make learning visible and bring learning to life and that those pieces of computational thinking are part of the keys to success, I believe, in order to make that move happen. So just a little bit of bias from me. I have lots of resources in this presentation. I think it's three pages. So you have those as takeaways to explore as well as those videos early on. Um, please come again. And um, next I'll be working on the grades four to six versions of the mind map and looking at some of the specific skills that, that technology can assist us in covering off, um, but focusing more on the skills and the concepts than on the um, technology itself. And I'm offering a drop in and chat June 1st after school. So if you can join me there, that'd be awesome. Come ask questions and we can see what we can work through together. And thank you for your time today. Bye-bye.